No, I was going to say I, I am um, grateful for my district because we have meetings and people show up, and it just makes me feel um, really proud to represent you. It's always an honor, and it makes me um, also understand better moving forward, no matter what happens in the process, because it is a process. Whenever I get the participation that we get in these, how to move forward. So, um, you know, I know that it, it sometimes feels like this wrestling match, but I can't tell you how much. Um, I appreciate your time and your energy and then how much you care about your neighborhood and your community. And with that, I will So let's begin with the general overview of a future land use as zoning. Every property in the county has a future land use map designation. This designation tells us the general use or long-term vision for a property and regulates the types of uses or development that may be considered. Future land use map designations also identify the maximum residential density of a property or the number of units allowed per acre, as well as the maximum amount of non-residential square footage allowed on a property. Similar to future land use, every property in the county also has a zoning district. However, zoning districts are more descriptive in, that in addition to the types of uses and activities that can be considered on a property. It also addresses building size, setbacks, height, access, and parking requirements. Zoning districts, oops, zoning districts has to be consistent with the future land use, that's the most important part. And here's the overview of the rezoning request. The applicant has applied to rezone 8.3 gross acres property from A1 Citrus Rural District to RCEC County Estate Cluster District to construct a subdivision of eight detached houses on 0.5 acre lots. So this is general location of the subject properties, District 1. The underlying future land use designation of the subject property is one unit per one acre. This is what's allowed and is located in local rural settlement, as you know. And this is a zoning map. The current zoning is A1, with the same zoning to the east, RCE zoning to the north, south, and west. A1 zoning currently allows one house and agricultural uses. So this is the proposed zoning RCEC. Here's the aerial map, as you're all familiar, the property mostly designated uh, as residential use, surrounded by single family homes and ponds, other stuff. So this is a plan, I'm not sure if you can see it, we're proposing a cul-de-sac and eight homes and two retention ponds on the north. The most important part of this application of process, since it's a cluster plan, it has to go to multiple boards. So today we're having a, uh, a community meeting. Next, this application will go to develop and review committee. Then it will go to uh, planning and zoning uh, hearing. And finally, it will meet at BCC where your commissioner will deny or approve this application. Each meeting, you can uh, come and participate and uh, provide public comment. We will uh, send you the notices for planning and zoning commission. You will receive a notice as you received it for today's meeting. Okay? We don't have the dates yet because this application has been on hold for so long. So we finally resume the process and this is the first step we have in this community meeting and then we'll determine when to uh, move it to development review committee, planning and zoning, and board of county commissioners. So you will be notified for planning and zoning commission. You can also contact directly your commissioner um, at the email district1 at ocfl.net for any comments, questions. You could also email all commissioners who collectively decide whether to approve or deny this application. And this concludes the staff's presentation, and I'd like to invite the applicant's team, who are all over there. This, this development 
is allowed one dwell, one dwelling unit per acre, so we can use eight put eight houses on this property. Um, Arena, Arena did mention the timing of getting here. There's several reasons that it has taken this long. One is we've been dealing with wetlands and uh, working with our environmentalists in the county on getting those things taken care of. Uh, but the biggest thing is the owner owner decided to change it, and the reason he wanted to change it because he had to lay out to utilize more of the property and in a more cost-effective way. It had the lot spread out, uh, utilizing his existing home on the property. Uh, but then he, he decided, he thought about it for a long time, and he wanted to change it. He wanted to give more volume for stormwater so he can help to alleviate as much as he can help with this small property, help alleviate the neighbors and the flooding that they've been experiencing, and as well as he's been experiencing for years now. So we went through and we did this design. We brought everything uphill, and we really expanded the stormwater retention facilities down at the bottom of the hill. Um, I think everyone that's here is probably aware that there's some uh, uh, more water during storms than there used to be, and it's causing problems. You know, Personally, I understand. You know, I, I used to live on a lake, but when the hurricane came along, I now live on an island. So I understand flooding, and I, 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 I totally feel for you there. Flooding is not a fun thing. So uh, with, with the help of Mr. Mealy, uh, we had come up with a plan to try to help to alleviate as much as possible this local area of flooding. And the way he's done that is he's had the house removed uh, at considerable cost himself. The house is going to be removed and not utilized. And the north, whole north half of it is going to be dug out to create more volume for stormwater um, events. In addition to what he has to have for his own property, of course. But um, this is something that he has, he has done in consideration for the residents. Um, and again, we're, we're asking for something that's similar nearby, RCE, uh, C, and um, we're not asking more than what it's already allowed for uh, to in, in the area is one unit per acre. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm a little confused about where he lives. I mean, is his house here? And yes, actually, what this. House are you removing? His house right now is in that big square at the top. That's where his house currently is, and where we're planning on putting a pond. You can see, uh, there it is, thank you. In the wetlands? Uh, no, it, it's not in wetlands right now. Well, uh, I think you tell me. <laughs> I've got a drone picture from Sunday, and I'll show you what it shows. Well, your definition of wetlands, there's flooded property, which is different than wetlands. Just because you're in a 100 year floodplain doesn't mean it's wetlands, right? Wetlands is typically down, much downhill of a 100 year floodplain. So it is technically, his house is not in the wetlands. It's flooded, but it's not in the wetlands. Okay, but every time the floods are there, not every time, they pump water into our lake, which makes our lake overflow. Like so a not, not, a good, not a good fit here. It's not a bad fit. Or, hey guys, let's leave all the questions to the end, so we just have I'm, I'm good for fielding questions. So, and tell us about conservation area impact for how much uh, are your impact? Okay, so the impact of the wetlands, um, I think that was a point. I'd have, to, I'd have to get back to you on that. Maybe it's on the sheet. I think it's on the sheet. Yeah, so the wetland impacts are 0.35 acres that we're impacting on the west side of the property. And that is, uh, that is part of the development and also part of expanding the retention areas. And keep in mind, you know, when people come out and say, well, we don't like development. Okay, look at look at this one. This is really creating more volume for stormwater events than what was there right today. I'm sorry, she was up first? Yes. So I see your boundary in your picture. Exactly how many feet is your boundary from that current lake? From what? The current from lake? From the water lake that's looking at your photo. How many feet is that? So what, what are the proper widths out there? 100 feet? 150? Can you zoom in on that, please? It's hard to zoom in. I have it on my computer. You can see the edge of the lake right there on the left, inside the black and white right. boundary. I think you're talking on the right. I'm so talking on the right. The water, the, the water outside of your boundary. Yeah, that might be 175 to 100 feet. So you know what happens when you build your development, like Mr. Holton did, and submitted plans to change the topography and the the size of the lots. 
And then he went ahead and modified some things, and he built much bigger homes that are to, to the property's edge, of five feet in between each lot, from one lot to the next. There's a pool, and he's actually 11 inches from his lot line. So you have all these, these very large, beautiful homes that the concrete slabs absorbing most of your dirt. We are just your water go, and there's no soil to absorb it and your drainage doesn't work because we have lived here for many years. I live in the Oaks of Windows. And my road for eight days was up to my knees in the center, and that was the highest. You're talking about during the last hurricane, Ian? Yeah. I'm saying anytime it rains, it doesn't have to be a hurricane. Anytime it rains, we do not have dirt that percolates down the water. So that is the situation. So, you know, my concern is you want to build you know, eight units, very large, beautiful homes, because we have beautiful homes here in Boca, we have a great variety. Your drainage is going to go into that lake or into the roads or into the turnpike area or into this lake here because even, even where I live, we have to bring in pumps and ask Bocoe, can we dump some water? We are flooding. And we couldn't do it during the hurricane, we had to wait the water to dissipate down and still in my manhole is filled with water and if we get a good storm i will be flooded at my property again okay so that is a very large concern of how you're going to handle the water and maybe less homes and more retention ponds to handle the water situation here in the well i think he's going to be extremely generous in giving such large ponds that he has on that property we have to meet uh orange county st john's requirements for I don't I don't want to disparage you, but we have to meet St. John's as well. And our our retention ponds when the builder came were submitted three times to St. John's and said, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. Bingo, it works. Now we can move forward, but we still flood. Okay. So I know what you're saying, but we live here every day and we see the rain and we see what happened that goes on. We still have homes. Um, of that have flooded. Well, let's, let's keep in perspective too. This is not a silver bullet that's going to fix all the drainage problems in Gopher. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody. But if you have someone that's coming along that he's, he's spending a lot more money than he needs to in order to develop it this way. He can spread everything out and make it much easier and say, I'm just taking care of my drainage problems and forget everybody else. But he's first he has to meet the St. John's requirements, the county requirements in order to not discharge more water off-site than they did pre-development. That's, that's standard. But then again, keep in mind that just because we have a 100-year flood elevation of 10, or amount of rainfall of 10.6 inches, it's not going to get to 10.6 inches and Mother Nature's going to say, okay, I'm done. Mother Nature's going to do what she does, right? So in this last hurricane, um, my lake was already at, at the 100-year stage. And then the hurricane came. Yes. We can't yeah. control that, right? We can't control that. All you can do is try to help. And I will say this, regardless of whatever the drainage issue is out there now, past 10 years before, doing it this way is going to help because we're creating more volume of storage in that area, period. It's, it's gonna be better. It's not gonna fix everything. Nobody's property can. You probably need like maybe a, a very large piece of property to fix the local drainage um, issues. But the local drainage issues are something that's really beyond our control. It's something that we're dealing with and trying to make the best of the situation. Yes, sir. Are you Brian? Yes. Okay. You're the civil engineer, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I think that it's important for everybody to understand that uh, the current zoning on this is one house per acre as part of a rural settlement. And the county has to bring these applications to us, even though they know that it's contrary to the current zoning and try to shoehorn these jobs into our settlement. So any approval of something like this is just going to open Pandora's box for every little vacant piece of property to increase the density around Gotha even more and create all the problems that we're trying to you know, discuss here with, with drainage, traffic, and everything else. And that's ultimately the problem. So. Um, trying to get, you know, eight houses into a piece of zoning that's not required or it's not allowed is the ultimate problem. And we have to go through, you know, we've 
got to go through DRC eventually and, and all these other things to do battle with you guys to keep this from happening. And yet you all keep going forward. I know that's what developers and engineers do, but it doesn't mean that we have to comply with it or agree to it. So I think it's important for everybody to understand this is not a single project. That, uh, this, this happens, this has happened before, and it'll happen again, and it'll make it just more lubricated for this to happen in the future. Back in 2004, we had the three hurricanes. Uh, the first hurricane, we were in the house. Um, there was no water anywhere. Second hurricane, Labor Day weekend, 2004. Water started to come up here, around this out structure. Within three days, the water had come up into here. And the water was coming up so fast that my wife and I and two children thought we were going to have to leave the house. So I went looking because this was now five days after Hurricane Charlie and Hurricane, I think it was Francis was the second one. And the water is coming up so fast that I'm afraid we're going to have to try to find a way to get out of this house, move everything or lose it. So I go looking, so I go north because the water is coming from here. And what I found was I went past the Gotha Post Office, and behind the Gotha Post Office is a river of water running that goes under the turnpike and directly into this part of Mill Pond. There are actually two pipes that go under the turnpike, one north and one south. And so I kept going, and I kept going up the road that the go the post office is on, and I saw this giant ravine at the very end of what used to be a 40 acre or so orange grove there at the end of that road. And I'm looking around because I didn't, there's no water. I found a gentleman across the street and I said, I told him, I said, I'm the neighbor down the street um, that's got all the water. I said, do you know where it came from? And he, and he looked at me and he says, you don't know what happened here? And I said, no, please tell me. Well, the Oaks of Windermere and the adjoining, the adjoining development have been pumping without authorization from any city or county. And they've been pumping, there were six pumps, three in each retention pond. The Oaks of Windermere has a big retention pond in the middle of the houses that is ornamental. It doesn't do anything as far as I know. And then it has a small retention pond in the back. What the Oaks of Windermere decided to do, the Homeowners Association was, is that they took a backhoe to the retention pond in the back of the Oaks of Windermere and they cut it and they released the water on top of six pumps running full time. And it started before Hurricane Charlie because it was a wet summer. So that was not the Oaks of Windermere as a group, that was one homeowner that did that, that opened that, that up. I have testimony because I sued. I, I, have, sued I have all the testimonies, and I have. So, all so can I just hit the pause button? I, I don't know how productive it is. I have to explain. Because no, but I, don't, I honestly, I can't validate anything you're saying. So my, so my concern no, is that with without having validation of what that is. They're, you're sort of levying accusations to a private HOA that's not here okay, right. under any so, official sir, term. So, you, <laughs> so it's really a very dangerous thing to do without representation from that HOA because that's an allegation that's pretty substantial. So it, I think it, if it, you it, want to describe the project that you're talking okay, about, then we can move forward. So I got flooded back in 2004. And it didn't come across the house, it came across the property from here and it went over to here. And it came down along the side of Dowdy's house and it flooded this pond, Gotha Pond. Now, 
We had water for a year. And the special counsel that I had to hire um, figured that over 20 million gallons of water was pumped from those two neighborhoods. And it took, they call it cheap flow. And it took a year to come across this property. It completely destroyed the driveway. This, if you look at a photograph before this, this was an entire canopy tree of oak trees. It's all gone. You can see exactly where the water came and went. So I was, I was victimized at that time. Um, and it cost a lot of money to take out hundreds of dead trees. And I decided, rather than having dirt there, to put in sod. So I put sod. Now, three hurricanes in a row, and I'm like, this, I've lived here 50 years. I'm like, it's a once in a lifetime thing. How can this ever happen again? Um, we wanted to raise our children there. So I didn't think we'd ever see flooding again. Um, I thought it was man-made um, from the hurricanes and then the pumping. So I said, honey, I said to my wife, I said, it'll never happen again. We'll never see water here again. But guess what? We did. And this time, it wasn't from any pumping that we know of. And all I have is theories, which I want to bring up. I have no idea where the water came from, but I can tell you that four years ago, on Labor Day weekend, Water was coming across this property with the velocity of a storm surge. It took trees out, just uprooted them. It flooded Goka Pond within 45 minutes, 20 feet up. The neighbor behind me, David Bowers, and the Dowerties had tried to take evasive action and they they were he brought in a bulldozer and they took a bunch of dirt from my land and they built this giant berm. But the surge in the water in 2018, again, we have no idea where it came from, just blew out this berm that he built. And this berm was 10, 10, 12 foot high, 30 foot deep. Just blew it out, buried as this giant bulldozer. I still have the pictures of it over there. So I just want you to understand that what what we're asking for, and, and we went around a lot of different ways to do this because in the summer of 2018, my wife and I listed the house for sale with a brokerage. Uh, and we sold it at the asking price. And three weeks later was when this storm surge of water, who knows where it came from, and it came and went in three hours. But there was so much of it, it, it came over here, and then this pond was pumped. Again, I, because I don't have the facts, I don't know who pumped it. But this pond had to be pumped because it was threatening all the houses around here, especially the dowries. Um, and eventually, the berm was going to cause backflow over here. So when you talk about pumping into Lake Olivia, Again, I don't, I don't authorize pumping. That's, I, I don't have that authority. Um, when the pumping after the 2018 storm surge happened, that was the previous county's decision to move water from here underneath the turnpike over here. And I still have all the photos of all the pipes, they stuck pipe, I mean, they stuck these giant pumps up under the turnpike right here, and they were pumping water from here, they were sucking it out of this yard. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the pause button again, because once again, you're sort of explaining things that, I mean, jurisdictionally aren't even Orange County at this point. They're, which, Florida, they're actually turnpike pumps. Which is, which is okay, fine. Okay, it's I, it's I another know. meeting for another time, and I think we've all been to those, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I just want to explain again that, that I'm, what we're trying to do here is, I'm, there were many just ways. Just explain the actual 
your actual plan or the, well, what this okay. application is but so that we can kind of get feedback and then move on because okay, but otherwise this is a very complex and sort problem. There were just attacks being made against me and the homeowner. I didn't put the water in there. No, it's not as a homeowner. They're attacking the idea of developing okay. in a wet area. So let's take okay, away the personal so attacks. What we're, what we're doing here is I'm giving, I'm tearing my house down that I sold. Yeah. But hold on, I'm tearing it down, and what the, what the engineer is trying to explain to you is, instead of the house being there, he is digging extremely large retention ponds. When he talks volume, he's talking about, this is roughly four acres of land and a berm in here, because as the homeowner, I was entitled to eight homes per one acre or eight homes on that property. And I sold the property on that premise. And then I lost it in a flood that I have no idea how it happened. So we're, we, we looked at a lot of different plans, but this is the one we came up with because this one gives Gotha the best chance of storing more water and gives me and my wife some chance of recovery of what we lost. It does not get me whole in any way, shape, or form. So, what's so that? You, you mentioned it wasn't enough. What, what, what do you say it's not enough? One house, one acre. It's the Gotha Rural Settlement. It's agricultural. That's when we bought it. That's what it was. That's what it should stay. Right. We have it's flooding. So the idea of a retention pond being considered part of that acreage is is contrary to the go the rural settlements idea that one for one that rural, the rural nature of a one for one so density. Wait, wait, please, please. One so one the one. clustering is is not favored because it has a completely different density where the homes are, it's a completely different density to solve an issue that has effectively I, it sounds to me like this is in order to recover your money, which is fine. I don't like here the reason the reasoning isn't really as important as what I'm hearing is that the density that the rural settlement is based on, which is a one unit per acre, that this alters that, but not necessarily for open space. It alters it to solve a problem that is required in order for this to be some kind of a developable piece of a parcel. And so that's what I think. Am I, am I saying that that's... Yeah, I mean, the fact that he's trying to put a massive drainage system, and I don't know where these things pop off that you got there, but you've inherited a problem that's, that's coming maybe from the turnpike, but the last time this emergency pumping took place, they pumped for weeks into Lake Olivia, so now we've got eelgrass, and we didn't have the pump makes to skip or buys this house for weeks. And I've talked to Archie, and this was a decision by Archie County in panic, because the homeowners, I guess, were lighting them up that the water's coming, and so they pumped it over you know, the turnpike into the next basin, which is Lake Olivia. So, so the, the, he's on the south side of the It's street. on the south side of the turnpike from where you are. So, so let's, let, let's take one at a time, please. So the, the first thing is density. And I, I know a lot of people here don't, don't really care about the history. They just care, what are we going to live with in the future? Um, Density-wise, Irina, please correct me. I know I'm going to get wrong on some of this. Density, it's allowed one dwell, for future land use, one dwelling unit per acre. That's been there, I don't know how long, maybe when they did the rural settlement. Since Gosha so, was founded in 1880, yes. There you go. So, I think they have so zoning back then. Yeah, it was the first German colony in 1880. one house for every little bit. There's no overlay. It's a good Yeah, the rural overlay is more, yeah, overlay more recent, but um, because planning really didn't come around until probably the 70s or 80s. But with this, it's, it's future land use. Future meaning they had planned this is going to be one house per acre. They have planned for that, one house per acre. They planned for eight. Houses on this property. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Wait, 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 please don't interrupt. They, please don't interrupt. I'll let you speak. They planned on one house per acre. They planned on eight units. The county has a mechanism for addressing case by case projects, and that's the cluster portion. On the south side of the road, it's clustered. We're adjacent to something that is a so, similar thing that we're I, asking for. It's one to one developable, developable acreage. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I think what we're trying to get down to though is 
what is developable. And so a one-to-one -one for the entire parcel isn't guaranteed, it's for what is developable. How much of that land is above the floodplain? About half. Are you raising or are you with the county? I am actually um, with the Gutter World Southern Association right. and you're in gardens. And when it's my time to speak, I will talk about the other things that affect. Okay. Well, let's keep, let's, let's finish and just wrap up on the zoning portion for a second. So the county does have a mechanism to cluster these. And if the county didn't have, see a benefit in this, they never would have created this ability to cluster the units. The same density, when you drive past this entrance, there's going to be a subdivision right to your right with eight units. Whether it's on clustered on a tenth of an acre, a bunch of eight units in one spot, or larger. But they're going to be larger half acre. Half acre is the minimum size they would let us do it, right? Because it's on the south side of the street. We are following county protocol for what they've done in the past and what they've done across the street. Mr. Mealy is not asking for anything special in that regard because it's been done before. So eight units, that's what you're seeing. The other aspect is I don't think anybody in here wants to miss an opportunity to help to improve the drainage in the area. You know, this, this has some serious issues. Not only that, the 100 year flood used to be 98 in this area. That's what's published data is 98 foot elevation. I submitted plans for 98. I got comments saying, nope, put it up to 100 and 101, 75, 102. It's not four feet. So our plan doesn't design for a 98 year uh, elevation for 100 years. We've got designed to 102, about, okay? So whatever we design on there, which you see some of it now, it's opening up more volume of water. So if you could change time and go to Hurricane Ian, and if Me Mr. Mealy's development was done, Whatever elevation you got flooded to, it'd be a little bit less. And I know that from my flooding in my house, I got seven inches in my garage. That is an awfully big promise to make, though. I don't know. Are you sure you want to make that? I am 100 percent absolutely guaranteed that if with this development, whatever flooding you get, it'll be less. It's like okay, it's the hot tub, hot tub. So we have, have so a county you, engineer here, Diana. Can I'm so sorry to bug you, but we do have a county engineer here. I just want to get her take on this. She's our. She we rely on her. Um, and she is also a Gotha resident, so she's very familiar with, with the area in the basin. What was, and, the, what was the question? Um, well, it was actually a statement that this was going to take care of some of the flooding in the area because of the, um, the retention. Right, so the potential. Well, there's a... Well, let me finish what I was going to say first. The, 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 the thought of hot tub, right? you got a hot tub that has capacity for 10 people. 10 people are in it. The water's at the top. You want to put another person in, you got to get somebody out first. What we're planning on doing basically is taking four people out of the hot tub that's already at the top. It's giving, I mean, you shake your head like I. I'm shaking my head because Mr. Neely mentioned that Osa Windermere had flooded in 2005 and somebody lifted the gate and the water went through like a bat on a pack. It sure did. Yeah. There was a lot of water being held at that time. Now, you're so confident that this community is not going to flood. No, no, I didn't say that. I said there would be a better situation. To you because it's not going to happen. But, you know, I understand you said seven inches came into my home. I couldn't leave my home for eight days because water was to my hands in the center of the road, not even where it was arched where the drain was, where water just comes out of the septic system and fills the road. So, Flooding is important. Not having drainage is important. Changing our topography of one house to one acre is important. And I understand that he made an investment in a home and he's trying to recoup some of his, his financial based on having eight. But when the property was purchased, he was fully aware of what the zone was. And it's one house to one acre. And that's all we ask. When, when you come in to go there and you want to build something, Please respect what's there. It's what makes us unique. It's what makes us beautiful. It's what the people want to come here to Yellow Dog and have lunch and, and see the old world trees and, and see what we have to offer. Well, the great thing is he is just asking for one house per eight acre per acre for eight no, acres, eight houses total. Right? He's only asking for eight houses. Period. There's no question that. On four acres. 
It's a cluster, but guess what the other four acres doing? Helping people in the area with flooding. No, it's helping here. So, what, I'm, so what, what I think you're not no, getting is take out the part that you, that's wet, that you're using for ponds. It's not usable acreage. Okay, so let's just, we'll call it ponds, we can call it wet, whatever it is. What are those lots remaining going to look like? And will they be compatible with the current character of the rural settlement? That's what they're trying to articulate. Is that a compatible, is that a compatible match? So the water's public water, sewer is septic. Um, compatible, I, I imagine there's an architectural requirement. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying the actual rural community, the density. rural settlement, the density, the density. idea of a one dwelling unit per one, per five, per 10, depending on the rural settlements in Orange County, they're all different. But the idea of the clustering is a tool for density in places right. where it makes a lot of sense. Rural settlements are different, and, and you know that. So, so what they're concerned about is we're talking about the character of a rural settlement and how this affects it. So the idea of having a certain amount of acreage that's set aside for whatever else it is in order to make the lot sizes smaller on the other side of the parcel is the concern. Okay. And I hope I'm articulating that. Then, Rita, do you have the, the picture of the zoning map yeah. still? Where's the public water? One second. There's no public water there. Is, is this all go the rural settlement? This whole picture? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You see that RCEC, RCEC down there? That's the same thing we're asking for. We're not asking for what has not been done in go the rural settlement. It's the same thing. Okay, so yeah, not I have to have to have to so, so wait, she, she has a question. Yeah, so. Well, there's a lot of questions. I just want to point out that the fact is that where you're going to put those eight houses is currently solid, beautiful woodlands, which in themselves absorb a tremendous amount of the rain and waterfall dust like this one. So you're automatically completely changing the landscape of that area. The hydrology and houses and the hydrology. And the fact is that the water table through this whole area has risen so much because of previous poor planning and overdevelopment in terms like green developments and whatever. That there was, you say you put in those retention ponds, but the fact is that the water tables are so high that this, it's going to continue to overflow. There is just no further capacity in this section. Uh, and I don't know if anybody is addressing that. Okay, thank you. Yes. So you're an engineer, and I'm going to explain this in the engineering terms. So, trees are giant biological engineering machines. When I walked the bridge the other day, we, we put a drone up in the air. Can you put your forestry picture back up for the woods? The one, the, yeah. So I walked over the bridge. That's a virgin forest with old live oaks, longleaf pines, and cypress. Some of them are 42, 48 inches DBH. That's about a 400 year old live oak. If you go to the tree calculator, um, as an engineer, if you put in 48 inches DBH, one live oak can handle 48,000 gallons of stormwater per year, just one. And if you count the trees that you're going to be bulldozing and curtain burn to put those houses in, you're losing all of your hydrology capacity for those trees to absorb that water and put it back up in the atmosphere. You've now added more non-permeable surface, driveways, roofs, and taken away the very mechanism that prevents us from flooding those lakes more, which is your trees, your wonderful hydrological engineering biology machines. So the problem is you're adding to, the, to more flooding. So I took a drone picture Sunday, and the real, we're in the Gotha Basin hydrology-wise. The Gotha Basin, yeah. The Gotha Basin is part of a hydrology system, uh, along with the Butler Chain, that absorbs, it's a huge water uh, wetlands system, which we are the headwaters to the Everglades. People don't understand the Butler Chain that Gotha and Windermere back up to in this basin, we're the headwaters to the Everglades, South Water Management District to the south, St. John's to the north. So all the water recharge in this area goes down, it percolates and it goes, rises right up in the lowest area. And if you look at some of the maps that are surround your Gotha Lake, if you, they cross over it, during hurricane, during the hurricanes, as you, the, the lake on the left, the wetlands on the left, crosses over Morton Jones, 
and dumps into our lake, Lake Nally, which by the way is still rising. And this is a week later after Hurricane Ian. And it not only does it flood Lake Nally, it floods the turnpike pumps, pump it into Lake Olivia, and then it goes down the line. Now Orange County did two hydrology studies, one in 2008 and another one in 2018. And their own engineers in Orange County said, do not pump more water into the Gopa Basin. Stop doing high density development. Stop your deforestation. This is causing the problem. So look at those studies, and I encourage you as an engineer, go look at the Orange County study from 2008, and they did it again in 2018. Not to mention, the turnpike that is now currently eight lanes is going to be adding two lanes on each side. We're going to be going from eight lanes to 12. So we're having more water that will come off the turnpike. Lake Pearl Bridge is going to be going from eight lanes to 12. The, the bridge near Camp Ithiel is going to be going eight lanes to 12. The Hempel Bridge is going to be lengthened all the way to the walls. And this bridge right here is going to be lengthened past the property entrance where they plan on bringing this in. So we're not even accounting for future water that the Orange County Turnpike is going to be bringing in when we go from eight lanes to 12. If you think it's bad now, wait till later. So this forest is critical critical for stormwater mitigation. And it, it may not seem, but if you do your research, go to the tree calculator and start putting in the numbers for these big trees, they do an incredible amount of stormwater mitigation. And we're gonna be losing all of that for more non-permeable surface driveways and roofs. If you're the owners, I encourage you to explore a grant. It's called the Florida Communities Trust Florida Forever Grant. The state of Florida will pay you fair price for your land to keep it a wetlands preserve. Now, you have to have a willing owner, that would be you, and we'd have to partner with Orange County and our county commission and a nonprofit to, to turn that and keep it into a water mitigation area to keep more flooding from happening. So I encourage you as the homeowners, make this a win-win for everybody. Just go for the Florida Forever, Florida Communities Trust Grant. You want the money for the land, we get that. We want, you want your investment back, we get that. As, as homeowners, but we as the Gotha community, we can't take any more high density development. We are drowning, we are literally drowning in water. And the more deforestation that happens, the worse it's going to get. The more non-permeable surface that goes in, the worse it's going to get. And I've seen it play out. I've been here since 2002, and I know a lot of the residents have too. And it's not going to get better, folks, by adding more development and taking out more forests that does critical water mitigation. We have to have those trees to suck up that water and stick it back up in the atmosphere. So they are. They're huge, awesome, giant biological engineering machines. That's what they do. That's what they're good at. And when you destroy whole swaths of it and bulldoze and curtain burn it, you just lost that ability. So the lake... This lake, you see the little canal up here in the corner where the green bar is? There's a little canal that goes back through a series of drains. It crosses over a dip on Morton Jones Road. Morton Jones, you're not showing the topography here. Morton Jones dips right back there where the green bar is. And that lake floods over Morton Jones and then dumps into our lake, Lake Nally, which is still rising. We've got little markers in Lake Nally. We've lost historic bamboos on the lakefront to the flooding. Um, we've lost all of our Florida native plants and cypresses that we planted on the lakefront 20 years ago from Eagle Scout projects. Of the 25 cypress, one's alive. Because even cypress needs, they have to breathe. So there are huge impacts when your neighbor adds more houses into a lake in the Gotha Basin. It rolls, literally. It goes to the other lakes as well. You've got impacts to your neighbors. So I bet you guys to go for the Florida Forever Florida Communities Trust Grant. And maybe you all can connect after this. I just want to make sure yeah. we don't run out of time. And Diana wanted to, to if we could come. Um, we have four minutes left, so we're going to be finishing up. As, as the commissioner said, there is a study that took place. This is a landlocked basin. What that means is that the water, the water in this basin has nowhere to go. Okay? And, and uh, it... That's why we have seen in the past years uh, some flooding occurring in this area because 
the, the uh, soil has been saturated with previous rains like it happened during Irma and now uh, during Ian. We have, the water has no place to go. The study did propose some, some options, very costly options to, uh, to, uh, to convey the water to a place where it could be a, um, disposed of, okay, or, or uh, diverted to, but that, uh, that plan is a very costly plan that funding is required for, which the county does not have. So this was, I asked her to come up when, when, when we were talking about yeah. being able to handle this water. I just want expectations so. to be realistic about no, no, what kind of retention yeah. you're talking about. No, nobody's saying it's going to fix the no, it's going to make it worse. Florida, Central Florida, it's, it's, No, I just want yeah. to, so that's why yeah, I, I just, wanted this. Right, I mean, there's a lot of history you, and the people here have been... Yeah, if you create more volume, right, it's going to improve the situation. Even a little improvement. An inch may matter to make the difference between flooding okay. somebody's houses and not. Okay, yes, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just, just one question related to that. He's digging out, he's creating more volume, but he's knocking down a bunch of trees and putting up eight half acre lots. So one adds volume, one takes away volume. So what's the net? Can you quantify, do you have a calculation, do you have something that says, here's the net water, storm water retention gain to this lot from what we're doing? Well, I, I think it might be a slippery slope to get into to, to say this many trees equals this much storm volume because... Every, everything taken into consideration. Right. I, I, I mean, I, I appreciate no, what Teresa yes. said, but, but without that being possible, we know that you're clear cutting a, a large area and going to put lots of it, right? Paving so, and everything no. in a street. So, so if, that's going to have a, a negative effect on storm water. If we have to fill in that area, then we'll cut the trees. Otherwise, we'll leave the trees on the lot for the developer to build his own around within the trees. I think it's not so much about the trees. My, my point is, half of it, you're creating storm water retention. Half of it, no question, no debate, you're getting rid of storm water retention because you're putting impermeable surfaces. And so right, what's the net effect of those two things? Do they cancel each other out? You've been up here saying yeah. it's going to be an amazingly great net positive, mm -hmm. but you're saying that, but can you prove it? Yeah, well, with, with the calculations that the county and the water management district requires, we prove that. Nobody accounts for trees in those calculations. Can they you just show it to prove? You're up here saying it. Can you show it? Can you say it? Here's, here's the report from St. John's that says this will be a net gain of stormwater retention capacity of the past. Yes, in my calculations, it, it will show that. I mean, I have some draft calculations now showing how much um, compensating storage we're doing. So like if you, if you fill in the floodplain an acre one feet deep, that's an acre foot, you have to cut out somewhere else an acre foot to give the volume, right? So it's a one-to-one -one take. But we're gonna be giving back more find out exactly how much more we got to get into that but I mean if we can't get eight lots on there we won't be doing any compensating storage in, in anything beyond is what's needed just for our property if we have to spread those lots out and make them all one acre it, it's going to be retention for Mr. Mealy's property and, and that's it everything else is just not to deal with so I mean that's just that's just how it is well, yes. wait, yeah, so I would like to finish up that last question okay. I would just like to, it to be said that that your argument that because they did it across the street makes it okay to do it here, it, it's not right. It, just because they've done it already and changed the, the agricultural zoning, it doesn't make it right to do it to this property. And yeah, ag agricultural zoning is a placeholder for when people are ready to make their zoning marry up to no, the... No, 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 no. I'm so sorry, I don't know what your qualifications are to say that. We have actual agricultural uses, yes. uses as well. It's not a placeholder for some folks. So <laughs> agriculture, if your future land use is agriculture and your zoning is agriculture, then they marry up. If your future land use is commercial and right now your zoning is agricultural just because it hasn't developed yet, that's the kind of situation I was... Okay. So, if they would have. But just to call it a placeholder indicates that it's a foregone conclusion, whereas this is a process. And right. there are no foregone conclusions. We're analyzing it, we have staff analyzing it. We, we hope to be able to discuss this with our with our neighbors. So, it's not a foregone conclusion that it's a placeholder until it flips to something else. 
That's why we have this process. No, I, I, I'd, so say it was, I'd say it was a foregone conclusion, but when you, when you set something, when, when previous county employees set something saying this is going to be residential future land use, but right now it's ag because no owner wants to pay. Future land use is rural settlement one to one. Yes. It allows agricultural and residential use. Mm -hmm. Because currently A1 it allows one unit and agricultural uses. Mm -hmm. What you're try trying to do will allow residential uses. Right. Yes. Right. So it is different. Right. That's a very big difference. And it's a cost well, residential. I just wanted to uh, conclude this meeting. Uh, say thank you everyone who came today. This is a process that we have this application going through. Next step, it will go to DRC, com DRC committee, where we have zoning, planning, uh, public works, transportation, utilities, all members of the county will be discussing this application. And then it will follow to public hearing, planning and zoning. For planning and zoning, we will send you notifications as you received today. You can come to provide a public comment. You could also mail me email me or mail me uh, the notices, your feedback, opposed or in favor, <laughs> I'm not sure if it is possible. You could also contact your district commission directly. My, my business card's on the table. If you would like to call me, email me, please feel free to voice your concern even more. But we have to conclude today's meeting and uh, thank you again. I have a last question for you. So since there's such a drainage issue in this area, would the county be interested in purchasing it to make the whole thing? A retention to alleviate the area problems? Yes, they should. Yeah, that's the so, like I said, there they is a. That's, that's a. FCT. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a policy. That's a policy decision that only the Board of County Commissioners can make. Okay? We, as a, a staff, we uh, we are here to look at the application that this so, uh, so there's a applic open. applicant has yeah. submitted and evaluated. Uh, uh, will it meet county code? Uh, possibly, yes, because he's following criteria, county criteria, and county code, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we are to evaluate it based on that. Now, does, does it uh, uh, guarantee that there's going to be no flooding whatsoever? We cannot, as you see, the, uh, the hurricane that we just went through uh, flooded many areas that we have never seen being flooded in this county. So we can't guarantee what nature is going to do. Now we can only uh, review the application for what is being uh, uh, submitted. It's, it's only a policy decision. So and, and I and I think it's really the important to note that the county can't compete on the open market with private residential development, right? Okay. We can we can we can talk about the way that you know park space is oftentimes invested in, and I would love nothing more than to see it held. Um, but it you just it's just really difficult to compete on the open market, and especially knowing sort of the interests in this area. And so you know we, we're going to continue to try to make sure that we're getting the process done the right way and, and keeping everybody informed along the way and do the best we can. But I know it's, you know, private property rights are, are strong. And so his right, their right to go through this process. 